M. Bison should stay dead. We saw a lot of that sentiment following our recent talking block discussing which characters we most want to see return as DLC in Season 2 of Street Fighter VI, and honestly, I was kind of surprised. Bison's easily the best main antagonist the franchise has created to date, and while he may not be quite as iconic and expected to be on rosters as characters like Ryu or Chun-Li, Bison holds a nostalgic place in many fighting gamers' hearts as the original big boss from Street Fighter II. To be totally upfront, I don't have much of a horse in this race as doing things like locking people down with ridiculously long block strings and doing tons of chip damage that leads to a naturally occurring 50-50 have never really been my thing, and so I've never been a Bison main and don't see myself playing him if he were added into Street Fighter VI. Now that said, I think he's one of the most cleverly designed, well-executed, and brilliantly implemented characters not only in Street Fighter, but in all the fighting game genre, and on that that principle alone, I'd say there's a case for him reaching mainstay oh status, God. which I'd like to explain now in three parts. Before we make our way through Bisonopolis, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more Street Fighter explorations just like this one. Part 1. A Really Good Bad Guy Power is a prominent theme in Street Fighter. Every character trains and thus grows their power, but it's what they aim to do with it that widely defines them and aligns them with good or evil. Ryu, for example, ultimately seeks power in pursuit of a sense of balance, an integral thread that runs through every aspect of our lives, which is a major reason why he's the main protagonist fans can project themselves and their own struggles and journeys onto. Chun-Li, meanwhile, seeks power for the sake of enacting justice in the world, and Sagat is initially driven to seek power for the sake of vengeance. There are many more examples, some of which are hardly fleshed out at all, but M. Bison has both a deep and clearly defined relationship with power as he aims to use it maliciously to dominate and to control. This is obviously highlighted in his continual quest for world domination, as well as in his propensity to use mind control on his victims. It's both M. Bison's overall goal as well as his means of obtaining it that make him evil, as he uses chaos and confusion to manipulate people into vulnerable, controllable states. This is perhaps best exemplified in Street Fighter V's A Shadow Falls storyline, wherein Bison plans to beam psycho power into major cities all over the planet to create global psychosis. Psychosis is specifically a state in which a person's internal and external realities are disconnected. Bison represents the threat that comes with disunity, as people in chaos are both afraid of and don't trust one another, meaning they cannot unite cannot organize, and thus can be dominated. Bison is the chaotic force that divides a house against itself, and thus ushers it towards its inevitable fall. Then he's also there to take full advantage of all the broken pieces. Bison conceptually is conquesting power that manipulates via chaos. This is a strong foundation for a central antagonistic force that, while clearly evil and easy to hate, is broad enough to open itself up to interesting interactions with just about every other type of character. In other words, Bison and the ideas he represents provide a bed of soil that's deep and fertile ground for many other story threads to grow in. Which brings us nicely along to our second point. Part 2. The Central Hub of Street Fighter's Story it's hard enough to tell a compelling story in the first place, but having to fit it in the context of a fighting game that requires you to come up with an intertwining narrative for every character on your roster is definitely the hard mode version of doing so. There are multiple ways in which one could go about tackling this, and we won't for a moment say that Capcom has done so in a perfect manner, but they smartly use their conceptually deep villain to act as a main hub to tether most other characters' paths too. Ryu may be the more recognizable main protagonist, but one could argue that the story of Street Fighter is more centered around Bison than anyone else, especially in the early days of Street Fighters 2 and Alpha. The majority of the cast is tied to the evil dictator in one way or another, as some seek to fight him, some serve him, Ryu is Bison's main target, and the entire World Warrior Tournament is his idea in the first place. Indeed, on the thematic and conceptual levels, Bison's developing relationships with others tend to be the most interesting parts of Street Fighter lore. I'd like to take a look at just a few of these relationships in more detail. How does revenge view and interact with chaos, for example? 
Sagat is initially enticed by Bison's power and ability to enact his will on the world around him, ultimately seeing the dictator as a means to expedite his vengeance on Ryu. All that's left is revenge. It's true, Sagat's allegiance with Bison does indeed bring him closer to Ryu and even gives Sagat the opportunity for his much desired rematch during the Alpha story. But Bison's shortcut means of capturing Ryu involves controlling his mind and thus corrupts the prize Sagat realizes he's ultimately chasing. Sagat's interactions with Bison lead him to the transformative realization that revenge for the sake of pride is cheap and unfulfilling. In this moment, Sagat evolves to represent more than just revenge, and so he abandons his relationship with Bison to pursue a more honest and satisfying route where he can eventually face his greatest rival in a fair and meaningful fight. Ryu, as we mentioned, wrestles with balance and more specifically is constantly tested by the allure of giving himself over entirely to one side of the scale, namely the Satsui no Hado, which is the killing intent or the ability to enforce his will. Doing so would cause Ryu to reduce his relationship with other people to an oversimplified kill or be killed dynamic that would isolate him from the rest of humanity. It would also sever him from his own humanity as he would lose the benefits of compassion, empathy, and the ability to communicate through any means but violence. As attractively powerful as this all is, to have the versatility to enact force or not to enact force, aka the power of nothingness, means you maximize your options for negotiation through life and thus can find the best paths forward in any given scenario. This is the essence behind the aphorism, speak softly but carry a big stick. Bison only really sees the big stick and wants to wield it himself, so he puts on the World Warrior Tournament in an attempt to attract Ryu so he can literally commandeer his body and his mind. It's when Ryu finally gets rid of the division within himself by synthesizing the Satsui no Hado and the power of nothingness in Street Fighter V that he rids himself of the chaotic division in his own spirit and is able to kill Bison. Chun-Li, Guile, and Charlie Nash all represent society seeking justice when afflicted by chaos, and specifically highlight the great tragedies that inevitably come when chaos is allowed to take root. Chun-Li tragically loses her father when Bison, having grown in power enough to make such a move, preemptively invades and destroys her village. You killed my- Yes, yes, I killed your father. What is it with you women anyway? I killed my father too, and you don't hear me whining about it! Charlie Nash loses his life as a faithful soldier on the battlefield, representing the tragic sacrifice that must be made to push chaos back, and Guile represents the tragic toll this battle takes on family as he's called away to fight and thus cannot serve his primary roles as a father and a husband. Balrog and Vega, aka Greed and Vanity, are expressways towards chaos as both hyper-focus on the self instead of loving the community around them. An overabundance of either of these deadly sins will quickly lead to psychological imbalance and thus they promote division within the self as well as from the community. The last one I'd like to cover gets a little intense, but Rose is the Street Fighter character most closely connected to Bison since the two share a soul and are thus infinitely linked. In Rose's alpha endings, Bison is killed, but as soon as the fortune teller takes rest in her bath and looks at her tarot cards, she sees his imminent return. Rose stands as an arbiter of order and is therefore locked in an eternal tension with chaos, which is actually a necessary balance. We learn from the Street Fighter V and VI director Takayuki Nakayama that Rose is in a time loop trying to stop M. Bison and this dynamic may point to chaos theory, which very basically explores the concept of predicting chaos. So we have a fortune teller foreseeing the return of M. Bison and being stuck in a loop where their battle infinitely repeats. Someone once told me time is a flat circle. Cool, but Capcom then sets us up for what happens if this balance were to be broken. If Ryu truly does kill Bison and Chaos is gone, order will naturally begin to grow out of control, and that's G, the Pangea-loving, harmony-promoting president of the world who poses an apocalyptic threat. The G slash Rose cliffhanger at the end of SF5 is some of the best storytelling the franchise has offered, and it very well may be that she's going back in time to actually ensure Bison sticks around to maintain balance and keep that infinite time loop going. 
Our friend Stephen Main Vox explores and theorizes about this in a little more depth than one of his Main Street blog entries, which we've linked in the description below for you to check out. Part 3. A Character Generator on top of being a powerfully central hub, Capcom designed M. Bison to directly help them out with roster expansion. As we established, when Bison is plotting global domination, he's plotting his own survival and constantly has Shadaloo scientists creating bonus bodies for him to transfer his soul into. It's not hard to see why such a device would directly help in the evolution of the franchise as it serves as a legitimate assembly line, kind of literally, for new characters. Characters that have been directly created in this manner include Cammy, DiCapri, Abel, Seth, and Falk. Ed all but follows this same path and can be included in the bunch for our purposes here, but he was technically abducted as a small child as opposed to being grown in a lab. The aforementioned Rose should also be mentioned in this group as she and Bison do share a soul and, unlike literally everyone else here, actually was possessed by Bison at one point. Side note, when's Possessed Rose going to be a playable character? While it's true that not all Bison body characters have been well received and fans have expressed fatigue at the overuse of this device, it's still a clever approach that funnels yet another facet of franchise contribution directly through this character. All of this doesn't necessarily add up to an undeniable reason as to why Bison should be in Street Fighter VI as stories change and roles can be replaced, but with how much Capcom has invested in Bison, it seems like he's become a figure that arguably should be around in most, if not all, Street Fighter games. I mean, we keep getting fighters like E Honda and Blanca who are classic world warriors but definitely aren't as conceptually deep, don't have as many fans, and almost certainly don't see as much playtime as Bison would. He did die in SF5, and the story does seem to have moved on, but he is set up to represent a more eternal concept as we saw in the bit about Rose. What's more, Capcom very well may already be teasing the Dictator's coming return with Ed and the Ruin Lab stage. Does Bison need to be present for a Street Fighter game to feel complete? Well, not necessarily, but as one of the most important and perhaps the most contributing character in the franchise, it's easy to argue that he deserves it. What do you think? Has this all led to a bigger appreciation of this big boss in your own view? And do you think Bison should be viewed as a Street Fighter mainstay? I've been John Velociraptor Guerrero for Event Hubs. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Damn!